Hi, I'm Rayburn Johnson for Sample Library Review, and today I'm checking out The Upright by Audio Brewers. The Upright is Audio Brewers' debut entry into the sample library world. Delivering an impressive 14 velocity layers, a flexible sound design engine, and taking its place as the first ever sample library to be delivered in ambisonics, the Upright is an excellent piano library with much more than meets the eye. The Upright was taken from a deeply sampled upright piano from the late 1980s. It weighs in at 49 gigabytes, 100 gigabytes uncompressed, and offers three mix configurations with over 42,000 samples. The Upright requires the full version of Contact 6.2.1 or above. The Upright is being released in five volumes over the next several weeks. Volume 1, The Upright, for 99 euros. Volume 2, The Upright Felt Keys, for 139 euros. Volume 3, The Upright Unicorda, for 159 euros. And Volume 4, The Upright Prepared, for 199 euros. There is also a surprise Volume 5 freebie coming on January 19th that will be included for all owners of any of the previous Upright libraries. A purchase of any of the volumes includes all of the previous and future volumes 1 through 5 in the Upright series. So today I'm checking out the Upright by Audio Brewers, which is a really unique piano library. On the surface, it looks like just another piano. It looks like just another Upright piano, but it is very, very unusual in that it's the first ever sample library to be recorded in ambisonic, so true surround sound. So that's a very, very unique feature. Um, unfortunately, due to the way in which we do our videos and the fact that we have to upload them to YouTube, I can't actually share it with you in surround sound, but it is an amazing experience to be able to listen to this in surround sound. You will have to have a third party decoder to do that. But today we're going to check out the stereo edition of the upright. And I'm telling you the stereo is honestly in, in my mind, it's just as impressive. Um, there are just so many things to like about this library. First of all, there's an incredible 14 velocity layers, which I had never heard of any library having 14 velocity layers. So you can actually tell from the moment you sit down and play it that this has an incredible amount of velocity layers because it actually feels more like a real piano than any other sample library I've ever played before. It has a great tone, but even kind of more importantly, it just feels right. Um, and then there's a, a really unique way in which audio brewers are releasing this library. They're going to do it in five volumes over the next few weeks. The first volume is already available. And the way they've, they're doing it is they release it as they've released the first volume for 99 euros. The price will continue to increase over the next few weeks with each new volume that's released. But with each new volume that you get, you get all of the previous volumes and all of the future volumes. So if you go ahead and get it now, you can get it for 99 euros and get all five volumes, which I'm going to show you today. So what are what what is actually in the upright? Well, first there's the upright, like I say, that's released today. So the upright, and there's always a layered edition that comes with each of these. There's an unicorda version, a prepared version and a felt version, and there's an eternal version as well. And you'll notice that there's some loops here, prepared loops. There's also a really generous set of presets, which really dives into the sound design capabilities of the library. So let's look a little bit just quickly at the engine. We'll go in more depth on that in just a little while, but you'll see the little hamburger here. This is where you start out with. You obviously have just your basic attack release and low and high pass filters, but the really cool thing about this is you'll notice as we go more in depth on this later is you can actually assign any buttons to the front panel and you can control these in a plethora of different ways. Um, with the little uh, hamburger, you see the different articulations, which right now are all active. You can unload any of those or you can disable them, I should say, and you can also unload them from memory. So again, you have volume controls for these. So it is a very, very customizable library. So I'm going to go ahead and be quiet now and let's just do some playing on this one and then we'll get a little bit more into each of them as we move along.
So that gets you a feel for where we're starting out with here. But again, you can control all sorts of things in here. So the keystrokes, if you wanted to just do the keystrokes, I don't know if you can hear that, but you can just hear the sound of the hammers hitting the strings. You have a sustain layer here. And then a resonance layer. and a pedal layer, which of course is just the sound of the pedal. And I don't know if you can hear that or not, you probably can't, but you can see it registering here. So if you have your speakers up, you can definitely hear it. Um, let's go ahead and move to the layered edition of the upright. We'll show you a little bit more there. So the interesting thing about the layered edition is this is where the sound design engine can really come into play. You have five different layers to choose from and you have a ton of different modulation options. So you can see you've obviously got your ADSR, but you can load or unload any of these and then you'll see that you can assign them to five different layers. So let's say for instance that I wanted my sustain layer. I wanted to take um, everything off of layer one except my sustain or let's say my, maybe my sustain and my keystrokes. And let's say I want to maybe pitch it down an octave. And I'm gonna say assign that to layer one. Then that's the only thing that will be assigned. That's the, the only layers that this will be assigned to. I mean, that's just gorgeous. I don't know if you can tell, but you can just hear this faint um, octave sitting on top of that. Just really, really beautiful. So let's go ahead and play around here. The dynamics, you know, obviously you can do things like compressors, you can do a gate, um, you can do a volume LFO. So let's do that just to give you an idea. Let's turn up the intensity. And sometimes the volume can get a little out of control with a few of these things. So just kind of be careful as you're playing with this. But again, I'm going to put it just on layer one and I'm going to sync it at a 16. Let's turn up the intensity. And let's change the waveform. It just adds this breath to it, that LFO. I don't know if you can tell. I, I love that. <laughs> Personally, I absolutely love that. Let's just add it to all the layers and see what happens. I mean, that is so cool. That's just so, so, so cool. You could just do so many things with this. Um, another thing that I really like, let's go ahead and take this off. Another thing that I really like is the velocity layers. Um, because with the velocity, you can actually take those 14 velocity layers and you can say, okay, I only want to play in the soft layers. So no matter how hard I play, it's going to just play within this range. So let's go ahead and do that. And there you go, you just have those soft layers. Or, for instance, here, I'm going to turn it up 
and I'm only, I'm going to play softly, but you'll hear that it's the loud layers that are playing this time. Just really gorgeous. Love it, love it, love it. Gosh, the more I play with this library, I have to say, the more I'm falling in love with it. I have a ton of piano libraries, as I, as I mentioned earlier, and I am still on the quest for the perfect piano library, which I know no, no such thing exists. But in my mind, piano is the hardest thing to fit into a mix. It just, it, the, the frequency range is so huge that, you know, it's so easy to get it too muddy or too tinny or, you know, it's such a hard thing to fit into a mix. And I'm definitely going to be looking at this one for sure as something to put in my template. This is, I, I'm really loving this. Um, let's go with the gate here and see what we have. So let's go ahead and sync it. Let's do an eighth. And I don't know. Let's see. How does this work exactly? Oh, I like that. That's easy enough. So let's just do a simple gate pattern. Just so many sound design possibilities. And again, you can see you've got ADSR, you've got offset. Actually, let's do the offset. That'll be kind of fun. So let's do the offset. We're going to turn that up. And the interesting thing about the offset is depending on where you put it is where the sample is going to start. So let's put it about there. Just love that. Just so many possibilities. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. Let's go to the Una, Una Corda edition. See if I can talk today. All right, and here we have the Una Corda. And I got to say, I love this Una Corda. Check out this. Lovely, lovely. And again, you've got the layered levels on Unicorda as well. So once it, oh, look at that animation, that's just so cool. <laughs> it's the little things, people. It's the little things. I love that. So let's just take off a few of these. Um, let's take off the keystrokes and let's just leave the sustain and resonance. Really, really nice. And let's go to the effects section. So once again, the effects are just like the modulation in that you can you can pretty much do what you want to. This is just a, an absolutely open, clean slate that you can pretty much just 
you know, put any kind of thing that you would like. So for instance here, well, if I'll hit the right button, there we go. You can see you have um, pass filters, an EQ, a format, which is really cool, transients, compressor, distortion, saturation, bit crusher, delay, plate reverb, convolution reverb, and tonal reverb. So just for fun, let's throw on the format. That ought to be interesting. Let's throw it, let's move the talk up. And here's where it gets crazy. You can actually attach it to the sequencer. Um, so when you turn the sequencer on, I'm gonna sync it with my DAW. We'll leave it at an eighth. And you'll see here, you can of course rearrange these. Let's just start it there and see what we get. Okay, the thing I missed there is let's do this. Let's, if you, you have to push this little black button, which tells it to connect to the sequencer and that will actually give it the movement. So let's try that again. I mean, that's just cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really fun one. Let's do um, let's do some delay, and also with with this, you can let's go ahead and turn the sequencer off. Um, let's see here. You can actually okay. So let's do this. This should be fun. Let's take the wet and let's assign that to the mod wheel. Okay, so I'm going to play with my right hand, and then we'll just throw in some delay here and there. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that up a little bit just so that we can make sure we're hearing it. I mean, just so many possibilities. Okay, let's move along. Let's go to the prepared version. And you can see here with the prepared, you have so many different things. So let's go through some of these. Let's start with the finger pluck. Let's go to the picked version. Almost sounds like a harpsichord. And let's go to the picked unicorda. Plastic bag. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard magnets before played on a piano or used to play a piano. <laughs> Slapped strings. Voice. 
first harmonic. really nice. How about some nails on strings? <laughs> Okay, so that's really interesting. Obviously, that's not something that you would just play a melodic tune on at first at first listen, but you know what? Let's just play around with this and let's see what effects we could put on it just for fun. So let's put a formant on it just because I kind of like a formant. I think it sounds just really cool. So let's start there. Maybe we'll put, I don't know, it doesn't need any distortion for sure. Um, let's go back to the modulation. Let's do, let's do the gate. So we've got the gate synced. Let's go up to an eighth note. Yeah, that looks good. All right, let's see what this does. I mean, that's just, that's just kind of fun. Just something very different. All right, let's go to muted. Let's take the gate off. And let's take the format off. And let's see what this sounds like on its own. and sound effects. Let's see what that is. So that's pretty neat. You've got a lot of aleatoric effects on there. All right, let's go to the loops and see what that's all about. So we've got prepared loops here. Okay, and Epo. And another Epo. You know what? I'm going back to the Ebo because it just hit me. These are loops. So let me just hold down the chord. Yeah, so it'll just keep looping. All right, bode.
and shakers. Ooh, could get in some spooky territory. Nylon bow. How about nylon bow motion? And again, we have some sound effect loops here. Now, just for fun, let's just take a couple of these. You have to be kind of selective here. <laughs> but let's do the nylon bow and the sustains down. And this is where all this sound design stuff really comes into play. You can control the volumes of all the layers. Obviously, you know, with these being, um, well, actually, you have a layered version. Let's just go over there just so you can see exactly what I mean. So with the layered version, you can, again, tell it what layer you want it to go on, and then you can control the different layers that you want the particular effect on or the particular modulation on. There's just so many, I think, or did I, did I misspeak? Maybe it's just, the, I guess you can just do the modulation. Yeah. So, but you can do the modulation and say, okay, I want, I want a gate, but I only want it on layer one. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do layer one again for the pitch. And I'm going to pitch it up an octave. And we're going to put the E bow. Nope, actually, let's put the nylon bow on layer one. And let's take every, well, actually, that's the only two things I have active. That's good. And then let's do the sustains with the pedal down and take it off of layer one. And let's see what that gives us. So let's see, we've got the gate here. And then um, let's do the pitch on, let's see, let's do it on two. I mean, just really. Ah, so many potential, so many possibilities and so much potential. All right, let's go to the felt edition. And again, I just love that automation. So great. And again, we've got the keystroke, sustain, resonance, and pedal. You can unload those. You can take them off temporarily, completely unload them from memory. But let's just play and see what we have here. Nice felt piano.
nice. And again, you have the felt layered as well. So let's just skip over that and go to the Eternal, since you kind of have an idea of what the sound design engine does. just hear that ring out really really nice all right so let's skip down to the presets and we're just going to go through a few of these because as you can see there is a really healthy portion of presets here that you can go through but this is kind of to give you an idea of what the different sound design possibilities are within the engine so let's jump just through a few of these let's go to chamber of secrets And let's jump down to 80s pulsing. And, and the great thing is too, you can see with the articulations what they're actually doing. So it gives you a really good feel for how to use the engine. Because if you find a sound you like, you can see what layers they're using. You can go through the modulation matrix, the effects, the mixer, you know, and see kind of what they're doing. Oh, it's really cool. How about an internal experience? going and going <laughs> thus the name eternal all right let's see here let's go to nice preset let's see what that's all about Reflecting. and tender pulses. All 
right, and last one, let's go to Winter Night. That one's really quiet. Let's do one more, just so we can end on a high note. Let's go to Fulfillment. Can't remember if I did that one or not. That's a really beautiful one. I like that a lot. So friends, that is Audio Brewer's entry into the sample library world with the upright. Again, five different volumes. The first one is out now. The next four will be coming over the next few weeks. If you want to get in on it, make sure to take advantage of that intro price um, because it will continue to go up over the next few weeks until all five volumes are released. So if you get in now, you'll get all the additional volumes. Everything that you see here that we've went through today, you'll get all of that at once. Um, I got to say, this is a very, very impressive piano library, not just because of the sound of the piano, although I really love this. This is maybe the best upright library I've heard yet, especially the fact that it has the 14 velocity layers that has just really impressed me. And again, it just to me, it feels so much like a real piano. But beyond that, you just have an incredible amount of sound design possibilities way beyond what you have in a typical piano library. Um, so many of these things you would have to do with a lot of different plugins or effects. They're all just right there for you to use. So really, really like that. I got to say, um, I'm very impressed with what audio brewers have done here, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what's next. What do you think? Is ambisonics, surround sound, or VR sampling of interest to you? Comment below and let us know your thoughts. Please like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Also, be sure to check out samplelibraryreview.com for more news and reviews, and also to stay in the know about weekly sales via our weekly deal compressor.